I'm Kathy, and 89% of you have more functional healthy brain tissue in your head than I do. I've had atrophy from brain scarring due to MS, and I'm now trying to uh, work my way back up from the effects that can have. Um, but today I want to answer uh, a viewer's comment from another video about my mom also having di uh, MS and how her diagnosis happened. So uh, I found out that I can talk endlessly about my mom because she was amazingly cool along with having MS. Um, so I'm just going to talk about her diagnosis in this video. And uh, the second video I'll make will be how awesome she was, um, despite everything that she lost. And she lost eventually everything to this disease. Um, it was 1971, her leg went numb, she was terrified. She went to our family doctor. He uh, told her he was going to put her in the hospital for a week, which he did, and they did all of the old-fashioned torture tests they used to use to diagnose multiple sclerosis, ruled out everything else, which was part of what they had to do, and then gave her her diagnosis. She first asked, is it gonna kill me? And they said, well, no, not directly. You might die of complications. And she said, what should I do? And they said, go home and live your life and do what you can until you can't and then just you know, expect the unexpected. And then she said, can you help me? And they said, no, there's nothing we can do. We don't have anything, because he's dead. Take a vitamin, <laughs> you know, eat well, exercise. Um, so that's what she did. She came home and she started every weird diet she could find, every exercise she could do, prayed every prayer she could pray, uh, saw every witch doctor that came along with crazy things like bee sting therapy, purposefully getting yourself stung by bees. Okay, now she had no treatment. Some of what she lost, I'm gonna try to talk about this and it's gonna be graphic because I think you need to know what a monster this disease was before treatment was available. She lost total bowel and bladder control. And this meant a lot of changes in our lives. <laughs> um, a lot of not going places, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of underlying anger in her because of her loss of dignity. She hated every minute of it and you could see that in her face and it wasn't self-pity, it was rage underneath uh, all of the acceptance and all of the dignity and all of the other things that she had, she had a rage at this illness. And it's because it took away her ability to walk, to uh, write, which is a form of communication that's important that we have. Um, she, it took away her um, ability to think clearly. It caused her to have seizures uh, approximately seven years before she died. Um, those seizures were terrible. Every time she would have one, it would wipe her into a blank slate and we'd have to start all over with physical therapy, etc., rehabilitating her. This was by about 2003. She was far, far too advanced for any of the disease modifying therapies at that time to do a thing for her. And that was true uh, up until 2010 when she died. She died by seizing herself to death for 11 years straight days, 11 straight days, and then she died. Now, the reason I think it's important for you to hear that is because if anything else besides the disease modifying therapies actually changed the course of this illness and actually prevented this illness from becoming a monster in the uh, patient's life, is the disease modifying therapies. When you have nothing and you decide to try to fight this illness in some other way, I'll say what my mom said to me when they came out and I didn't want to take them. She said, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Why would you not do this? And I've talked about how the first two beta serone and Avonex did not appeal to me because of the side effect profile. Um, and I waited until Copaxone. That was a big mistake on my part. I should have gotten immediately onto anything that would have stopped and I wouldn't be in the 11th percentile now. That's about myself though. Um, watching my mom seize to death was uh, probably uh, the most horrific experience of my life. Um, and 
I just want no one to ever do that again because of MS. I want you to be living your best life and making your best choices while having this disease. Now, there's a generation that had nothing, which was my mom. There's a generation that grew into, that had their diagnosis and grew into uh, these disease modifying therapies. And we saw those changes. And there's now a generation of people being diagnosed who are seeing other patients who are treated. And we make it look easy. It's still not easy. It's still not easy. Like I'm almost so angry that I'm begging you to get on a disease modifying therapy because this puts a family through hell. A mom who can't control her bowel or bladder. Uh, for bladder control, they gave her an indwelling Foley catheter, which she had to wear for the remainder of her life, which was about 25 years from the point that that happened. Uh, it gave her endless, endless uh, urinary tract infections. She was on constant antibiotics that caused myriad other problems, uh, facial breakouts and uh, allergic reactions eventually to almost all of the antibiotics. By the end, she could only be treated with uh, vancomycin, which is an extremely high level and kind of very organ damaging uh, antibiotic in my understanding. Uh, Dr. B, correct me if I'm wrong about vanco. Um, in any case, uh, we used to have to run it at home. She would have a, a, a thing inserted in her, in her arm that went straight into her arteries. And I had to hang the, the MS drip bags and count the drip rate for the, uh, for the vanco over the course of like 11 days. And they didn't even send us a home health nurse or anything. Um, then when she started having the seizures um, and they were due to uh, increased core temperature due to her constant fevers from the constant bladder infections, um, she, oh gosh, see I lost my train of thought. Again, I don't wanna edit these too heavily because you need to see that that just completely happens to me. I just lose my train of thought. Okay, talking about my mom, talking about constant bladder infections and the damage of having to be on uh, uh, antibiotics, strong antibiotics the whole time. Um, this took away a good deal of my mom's dignity. It had to, she had to give over to other people being in her most private spaces, literally in her most private spaces and having to care for her. And she despised that. Now, she never, ever complained. And that to me is a miracle because boy, can I gripe up a storm. But she never complained. She also had no time for anybody else's complaints either. Um, and, and I can understand that. She was always going through something worse than just about anyone else was going through. So she really didn't have time to listen to someone talk about how their you know hand was hurting or something walk it off. <laughs> so uh, this made her a little bit cold as a mom when it came to caring for us when we were sick. Um, you know, being sick in my house was a very lonely uh, experience uh, because she couldn't get up the stairs to comfort us and uh, she didn't want to hear about it. So if we were going to complain about it, we could just go back to our rooms. Um, you know, it, MS took away my mom's ability to write, um, which is a form of a communication, uh, which meant that Christmas cards and things that she was always used to doing had to be adjusted. Um, anything that she was addressing, anything, etc., I had to take over that uh, for a long time before I left for college. And um, let's see, at the same time, my mom was doing amazing things, as I said, and I want to talk about those. but. My point here is that it was a steady decline. There was nothing anyone could do about it at the time. And it caused her to have a horrific death. And you don't have to die that way. There are things right now that help us and that are helping me and that my mom was overjoyed that I had the ability to use. Um, because when I was first diagnosed, those things weren't available either. And she thought I was going to be going down the same road she did. And that's the first time I ever saw her break down and sob was when I told her, 
mom, they finally diagnosed me with it too. And I wasn't even that freaked out because my mom was so awesome. I thought even if the trajectory of my life was the same, um, I would still do those awesome things. And um, MS was something that even though it was a monster, I could plan for and I could live with. And um, I thought I was going down that same road. Then I had the advantage of the disease modifying therapies come out and it totally changed everything for me. Um, and I want it to change everything for you too, because what I want the most is for you to be living your best life with multiple sclerosis. I do apologize for the graphic nature and for my vehemence on this issue. I'm not a healthcare professional, um, but I think any healthcare professional that is dissuading you from using a disease modifying therapy is also out of their mind. And you need to realize that brain damage is still continuing even when you're not seeing symptoms. When you think you're in a quote remission, that's silent things going on in your brain that just don't correspond to visible symptoms. But it's going to lead to scarring and shrinkage that is going to affect you later in your life. You are taking a disease modifying therapy to prevent the future that my mom had. You're not taking a disease modifying therapy to be happy right now, although you should be. But uh, I want to wrap this up. I, I know that I sound angry, but I am angry about what my mom had to go through, especially compared to me. And I'm angry when I hear people say, I'm cool, I can exercise out of it, I can eat right, nothing will get worse for me, and they could not be more wrong. Please, be on a disease modifying therapy. I'm Kathy, and I hope and I want you to live your best life with MS, and I'll see you next time to talk about what an awesome human being I had for a mom.